So the Fed met earlier today and they raised interest rates by another quarter percentage point. That was the news of today. But there's a deeper problem at work, okay? The Fed has now also signaled, if you're divining the way they send signals to the market, that they may be done with their rate hiking campaign in the near term because of some of the banking instability, even though the reason they were hiking rates in the first place is that we did have an inflation problem and still do have an inflation problem in this country. And so putting aside the you know, game of trying to like a soothsayer figuring out what the Fed is actually trying to say. Let's take take a step back and look at the bigger picture about what a joke this whole system is that gave such power to the Federal Reserve in the first place. Here's the real problem in our country with our financial system, even with the supposed banking instability right now with respect to the instability in financial markets. It's just a symptom of a deeper problem, and it's this. Our Federal Reserve, the U.S. Fed, it's been trying to play God over the financial system for far too long, except effectively it's been the equivalent of playing God with a fat finger. The Fed has done a disastrous job in its mandate of trying to balance inflation and unemployment. It's like the equivalent of trying to hit two targets with a single arrow. And guys, you know a lesson? It has not worked. It's been, I think, a disaster over the course of the last several years. And in fact, the Fed has, even over the last couple of decades, created some of the very financial crises that it was supposed to have helped avoid. Because you want to know why? They have the mistake of using late cycle market indicators like wage growth as a signal as though they're leading indicators of inflation. And so that does a couple of things. One, you have a Federal Reserve that right when they see those late cycle indicators like wage growth take off, they treat them like a leading indicator to raise rates precisely into a business cycle that's already over its peak. And what does that do? It actually accelerates the down cycle and the the downturn in the economy, leading to a credit crisis, which then leads to calls for bailouts. We saw that in 2000. We saw that in 2008. And we're now beginning to see it in the year 2023. We shouldn't have to learn that same lesson over and over again. Now, the other thing it does, and it's done this for the last 20 years as well, you wonder why real wage growth has been so flat for 99% of Americans over the course of the last 20 years. It's because that policy of the Federal Reserve is actually fundamentally hostile to wage growth itself. Why is that? Every time they see wage growth as an indicator and they treat it like a leading indicator of inflation and raise rates, that means they're playing whack-a-mole every time wages go up, when in fact the reality is that wage growth is a trailing indicator. It's a le- it's late cycle indicator of the fact that the economy is already done well or even overheated. So that's actually where the Federal Reserve loses on two counts. It loses both on the count of trying to smooth over the business cycle, when in fact it exacerbates that into a boom-bust bailout cycle instead. But it's also fundamentally hostile to wage growth in this country itself. And they've done a disastrous job at implementing even their own stated objective of balancing inflation and unemployment, even as that's a flawed premise itself, that inflation and unemployment are a real trade-off. That's based on old British data from New Zealand in a curve known as the Phillips curve that itself is false. It's an academic relic. But even if that academic relic were true, the Federal Reserve has itself done an awful job of even trying to implement that vision of its agenda. So what's the right answer? The right answer is we need to put the Fed back in its place. What does that mean? We need to restore a U.S. Federal Reserve that goes back to stabilizing the U.S. dollar as a unit of measurement. Okay, think about the number of seconds in a minute or the number of minutes in an hour. If that were floating, we would never show up to a meeting on time. Well, the analogy is when the dollar isn't a stable unit of measurement, you have distortions in capital allocation across an economy that actually are an impediment to GDP growth. It's no accident that GDP growth has actually gone down dramatically. We were at over 4 plus percent GDP growth a year for most of our nation's history into the early 1970s. It's been well under 2.5% and significantly under 2.5% even recently, but well under 2.5% ever since then. What happened in the early 1970s? The U.S. left the gold standard. So as the U.S. president, what am I going to do? I'm going to put the Fed back in its place by telling them to focus on stabilizing the U.S. dollar, you could say, as measured against a basket of currencies. And that should be their sole mandate. You shouldn't even know who, most Americans at least, shouldn't know the name of who's leading the Federal Reserve because it should be such a ministerial function. And I think, ironically, that's going to be both a ticket to GDP growth itself, as well as avoiding these man-made, self-created, in many ways, Fed-fueled financial crises. And we then see the farce of all market participants 
taking the word of the Federal Reserve as though it's God. It's, they're taking their word not because they're God and have any other separate knowledge about the financial system that normal market actors don't have. It's real, they're really watching the Federal Reserve just to see how the Federal Reserve is going to tinker with markets and maybe even interfere with the business cycle in negative ways to understand what more damage they're going to do. That's really why people pay attention to the Federal Reserve. And I think we need to put them back in their place. And another way to do that is actually by reducing the headcount in the U.S. Fed system itself. There's about 22,000 employees in that system. I think if we're just talking about restoring the dollar as a stable unit of measurement, and yes, that includes being a lender of last resort as part of that, you need fewer than 2,000 employees in that system. That means it's an over 90% headcount reduction from where the Fed is today to where it, I think it needs to be. And that actually is a lesson that applies across the federal bureaucracy, where when you get tens of thousands of people who show up to work who shouldn't even be trying to carry out the function they're carrying out, you actually get negative results that go beyond just the cost it takes to cover their paychecks. That's just the smallest part of it. But even more importantly, people taking on far more responsibility as the federal government than they ever should. And the U.S. Federal Reserve is the perfect example of that. I'm the only candidate I'm aware of that's focused on these issues. But if you actually want to revive the American economy and unleash 4% GDP growth again, I think that that starts with reform of the U.S. Fed itself. And I'm not afraid to take that on.